So this is my number one suggestion if you are thinking about getting rid of cable. Try this first and see how you like it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking about cutting the cable cord and if it actually saves you any money. There are so many streaming services out there right now that it's hard to keep track of and if you're subscribing and paying for them every single month, is it any cheaper than just having cable? Today I wanna to talk about pricing, various options that are out there and try to figure out what the best and most affordable option is. I will leave a list in the description box of what I'll be talking about today, along with their timestamps, since there is a lot to cover, so let's get started. First up, I wanna talk about the price of traditional cable. So this is RCN, Xfinity, AT&T, and I actually wanna tally up my family's cable bill every month to start off this little experiment. So we currently have RCN. We had Xfinity in the past, but we switched when RCN was having, you know, an introductory deal that would make our monthly bill lower. We all know how that goes. Needless to say, it wasn't lower for very long. And now we currently pay $118 a month for genuinely the most basic cable to ever exist. We basically have about 10 channels and some local channels. And of those 10 channels, we probably watch three to five of them on a regular basis. And that $118 a month is not including our internet. That is just for cable service and for renting the equipment every month. So our cable boxes and DVR recording services. So that adds up to be almost $1,500 a year for something that we genuinely barely use. I also wanna talk about AT&T and Xfinity since those are the other two kind of main cable players in the market right now. So let's go to the AT&T website and look at their cable package bundles. So as you can see, they have bundles that range pretty drastically in price. And it says here, this is with a 24 month agreement and that prices are higher in the second year. So that's something to consider if you do wanna sign up with AT&T, make sure you ask them what the higher price is after the first year, because it could be dramatically higher, which is something that most cable companies tend to do. Now, we've never had AT&T for cable. We've only had Xfinity and RCN. So I actually talked to one of my friends who has had all three, and he made me a chart comparing the three companies and their pricing, ease of use, and customer service. So let's look at that chart next. So AT&T gets a rating of four out of five for price and four out of five for customer service which are two very good ratings. My friend said that when he had to contact AT&T, he was able to talk to a person, which I know is a huge struggle when you have to call your cable company, you're always getting a robot. And he also gave it a five out of five for ease of use. Comcast, on the other hand, one out of five for price, one out of five for customer service. We've all heard Comcast customer service horror stories, and it definitely is one of the most expensive services that you can get. As you can see right here on the Xfinity website, it shows you exactly how much your bill goes up. So I guess that's a good thing in terms of transparency, but it's so drastically different from the introductory rate to their regular rate. Especially if you sign up today, you're paying $80 a month. But then eventually you'll be going up to $146 a month so it's very different from year to year, which can be super frustrating. Now let's talk about streaming services. And this is where things start to get a little confusing and where dollar signs can start adding up very quickly. I personally was not happy with our very limited RCN package. So I ended up buying AT&T TV back when it was Direct TV Now. So this is completely different from the AT&T cable service. This is AT&T's streaming service. When I signed up, it was $45 a month and I got a free Apple TV for signing up. So that was basically the reason why I signed up. And you can stream on three devices and for an extra $5 a month, I was able to get a subscription to HBO. So for $50 a month, I was quite happy with all that I was getting. These days, however, my bill is up to $75 a month, unfortunately, but it does include HBO Max and the regular monthly price for HBO Max is $15 a month, which is one of the highest like single channel streaming prices that I've seen. 
So to have my AT&T TV include HBO Max is a huge plus for me. So unfortunately, a lot of these streaming services do get you the same way traditional cable does by offering you a low introductory rate or some fancy gadgets to go along with your package. But again, if you're gonna sign up, just make sure you ask what the rate is gonna be once your introductory rate expires. The main thing we use our AT&T TV app for now is sports and news coverage, which are both things that we get limited to no options for with our RCN cable package. Other options that I've looked into for streaming services are Sling TV and YouTube TV, so those are two that I wanna talk about next. The base price of YouTube TV is $65 a month, but you do have to pay for premium add-ons like HBO, Showtime, Stars, things like that. So the reason I actually didn't switch to YouTube TV is because with the add-on of HBO Max, it would be $80 a month, which is more than I'm currently paying for my AT&T TV. I have heard that YouTube TV does have one of the best sports coverage options, so that's something to look into if you really just want cable to watch sports. The next option is Sling TV, which is $35 a month, which you can see is drastically different and lower than the other two options. But on the downside, they only have two cable package options, so if neither of them work for you, there's nothing you can really do about that. And I have heard from my friend, again, who made me this lovely chart, that the Sling TV interface is pretty difficult to use. So now let's move on to other streaming services like Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, which most people have, and let's see how much those cost. Netflix can range from $8 a month to $19 a month depending on what plan you get. Hulu comes in at $6 a month for a subscription with ads and $12 a month for one without ads, and Disney Plus is $7 a month. You can also get Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN together for $12.99 with ads, or $18.99 without ads. Something you should definitely look into though is if your phone plan covers any of your subscription costs. We have T-Mobile and T-Mobile does pay for our Netflix subscription. And I know Verizon pays for, I think Hulu or Disney Plus or maybe both. So look into that if you're looking to save some money on your streaming services. Also, like I mentioned before, HBO Max is $15 a month. And to access these apps, you either need a smart TV or kind of like an extension like an Apple TV, a Fire Stick, a Roku, a Chromecast, or something like that. So let's look at how much those cost. A Roku is currently $25 at Best Buy, and you'd need to buy one for each TV you have if you wanna use a streaming service. Fire Sticks range from $29 to $49, and an Apple TV is anywhere from $140 to $200. I will say straight away, if you don't already have an Apple TV, I would not recommend getting one. If I didn't get one for free, I would have never gotten one. My Fire Stick does the same thing my Apple TV does, but for a fraction of the cost. It is nice that you can AirPlay to your Apple TV if you have Apple devices, but honestly, I don't think that's worth the money and you can get the Apple TV app on Roku, on a Fire Stick now. So to me, an Apple TV is not worth it. And I know that the Apple TV remote is one of the hardest to use. And that's one thing that my parents, when they try to use the Apple TV, they hate it because of how hard the remote is to navigate. Finally, I wanna talk about TV antennas because these are the star of the show in my opinion. I bought my parents an antenna to show them that we didn't need cable to get their favorite channels. And lo and behold, we plugged our antenna in and we get like over a hundred channels for free. They get their, you know, PBS, MeTV, Turner Classic Movies. We get all of our local news stations and it's all for free. We just bought the antenna on Amazon and we get all these channels. They're super affordable and sleek these days compared to old, you know, bunny ear antennas. So this is my number one suggestion if you are thinking about getting rid of cable. Try this first and see how you like it. So now I wanna add up how much it would cost if we returned all of our cable boxes, got rid of RCN altogether, and just went with streaming services in the future. So we currently have five TVs in our house. I know that is excessive, so if you only have one TV, this is obviously gonna be way cheaper for you. So let's just say we wanted to buy all new Fire Sticks for our TVs. We actually already have Fire Sticks for each of our TVs, but if we wanted to get new ones, 
If we got the cheapest option, it would come in at $125 for five fire sticks for our TVs. The current AT&T TV plan I have now, like I mentioned, is $75 a month, which includes HBO Max. And if we wanted to get our local channels, then we would buy antennas for each one of our TVs, and that would come in at about $140. And then per month, we have Disney Plus and Hulu. So that comes in at $13 a month. And like I mentioned, T-Mobile pays for our Netflix. So that's not something I'm gonna include in this price. So our upfront cost for new kind of equipment for our TVs would be $265, just a one-time upfront cost. And then our monthly cost would be $88 a month, which is $30 cheaper, than our current cable subscription for our 10 channels. So here are my final thoughts. There are obviously pros and cons to getting rid of cable. Pros, in most cases, you are gonna save money and you'll never have to deal with trying to call RCN or Comcast ever again and waiting on the phone with them for hours on end to try to get them to fix something. As far as cons go, it can be a little bit more of a hassle to have to you know, switch between applications or maybe switch between TV inputs if you're gonna be using an antenna and you know a fire stick and that can be really difficult for some people to navigate who aren't used to it. I will say though, my parents who were very skeptical at first have really embraced the switching inputs and switching between apps on our Fire Stick and are now completely used to it. So it is just a little bit of a learning curve. So for you personally, you might have to decide just if it is worth the hassle or not and if it's worth the amount of money that you're saving. So this is a lot to digest, but if you have a system that you really like and you really recommend to people, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you want me to go into anything more in depth like YouTube TV, Apple TVs, Fire Sticks, let me know and I'd be happy to do future videos on those topics. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support and I will see you in my next video. Bye.